wonderful fathers out there this morning. A happy Father's Day. Amen. Happy Father's Day to you.
amazing. You're so amazing. And Father, you're so amazing. You woke us up this morning, Father God. You brought us into this world. Another day, a day that we won't see again. But we still know that you're amazing. You lift us up this morning, Father God. And we're going to come to praise you. We need you to come into this house, Father God. I walked around this church. I see some people going through something, Father God. You got to come inside here, Father God, and help us through it. Have your way in here this day, Father God. Oh, Father God, whoever's struggling, going through something right now, be there for them. Just touch them on the, tap them on the shoulder, Father God. Let them know that you're going to be there for them. Let them know that you're going to help them through it, whatever it is, Father God. There's nothing too strong for you. You can do it all. Let us pray. If you can stand, please stand. Thank Heavenly you. Father, we come before you with our head and eyes closed. Thank you for all that you've given us this day, Father God. You woke us up in our right frame of mind, Father God. You gave us sense enough to come to church, to get the word that our pastor is going to bring forth, Father God. And when you get that word, absorb it, take it with you, pass it on. Don't just hold on to it. Let it be joyful for everybody else too, Father God. Oh, Father God, bless those that are struggling right now, going through something. Bless those in nursing homes and in the streets, Father God. Those that are struggling, Father God. Bless those that incarcerated, Father God. Bless all of us, even us, Father God, as Christians. Bless us. Give us that word that we can teach and share, Father God. Come inside this church this morning, Father God. This afternoon, this evening. Have your way. Bless those that need you right now, Father God. We all need you, but bless those that need you. I can wait, Father God, for mine. Oh, Father God, but they need you now, Father God. Bless those and thank you for everything that you've given us. You gave us a roof over our head, food on our table. You blessed us with another Father's Day, Father God. Bless all the fathers in this church here and all the fathers around this world. Oh, Father God, Father's Day is just not like Mother's Day, but Father's Day is a day that we rejoice in. And we love it too, and so do the mothers. They give it to us. They show us our wives, our children. They show us, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everybody that you talk to. You walk with. Give us traveling grace and mercy. Keep her harm and danger away from us. Bless those that we know in this church that are in the hospital, Father God. Jesus. Let them know we're in there in our prayers. Bless those that couldn't come to church today because they had to work. But let them know they're in our prayers, Father God. Bless, God. Bless our praise singers who bring the word to us every Sunday in a joyful and manifold way. Bless our musicians, Father God. Bless our deacons, deaconess, ministers, first lady, pastor. Bless us all, the congregation. Father God, we need you. Bless this world. Bless our children. Bless those fight those wars, Father God. Oh, Father God, just give us peace, love, and happiness. So we can be together again. Let this day be a joyful day. Thank you, Jesus. It started out wonderful with Hallelujah, God. Ah, oh, it started out wonderful because you woke us up. And you brought us to Sunday school. And you taught us on Sunday school on the on the Zooms, Father God. And we got the word. We know what it's all about. And we thank you. Thank you. Bless those that can't come. But we let them know that we love them. Keep us together. Keep us strong. These blessings on bless your Sunday, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.
God, to our pastor, to our first lady, to all the clergy that are in the house, to our deacon, deaconesses, officers, members, and friends. We want to welcome all of our folks that are online with us and folks that are in person with us. And people, you are visiting with us here at First Calvary. We are family here at First Calvary. And at the end of the sermon, Pastor is going to open up an invitation to join our family. And if the Spirit moves you to do so, we welcome you wholeheartedly to join our family. If not, just know that you are welcome to fellowship with us at any time. Amen? Amen. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. So, all the dads, can you please stand up? Yeah. So, all the dads, granddads, uncles, goddads. So, here is my proclamation to you. On Father's Day, we celebrate the dads, the stepdads, the grandfathers, and the father figures in our lives who shape who we are and set an example for the kind of people we aspire to be. They sacrifice so we can succeed, they mentor us so we can reach our potential, and they believe in us so we can learn to believe in ourselves. And across America today, fathers, they work tirelessly every day to build a better future for their families, devoting their lives to ensuring that their children are safe, supported, and empowered to pursue their dreams. And so today we honor these men who have showered us with their guidance, encouragement, and unconditional love. Because fathers are critical to raising the next generation and to teaching their daughters and sons about the values that matter most. They demonstrate responsible fatherhood and they foster a healthy perspective on masculinity. And along the way, dads help their children navigate lives most difficult challenges, nurture their confidence and character, and give them the tools to develop a moral compass. So to our fathers today, happy Father's Day to them. We need to give it up. Not all, and I just want to say that not all black men are bad. That that's a lie. A lot of us have fathers, okay, and people who have stepped in. And to the mothers who are fathers, we appreciate you too. But I'm talking about the dads, the real dads that are out there. And so we just want to say, I know it's not like Mother's Day, but you do your bargaining, but we want you to know that we love you and we support you. And for all those who promise have passed on, God has blessed you. I know my heart is heavy as well, but I thank God my tears are not tears of sadness. It's just tears of happiness that I had a father who loved his family and who took care of us. Amen. So to dad, we, we love and honor you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right. So just note that tomorrow is Juneteenth. That is our Independence Day, our real Independence Day. So please, there's a lot of things going on. Please remember that. Next week, we have our ushers and nurses and security of anniversary. They're having a program. Amen. It's been a while. Give it up for them because every day, every Sunday, they are there. Every Sunday, they are there. So we just want to honor them and celebrate with them. Also on next um, Sunday, we're going to recognize our graduates as well. We have five. I have Alyssa, I have Ms. Bradley, Prince, uh, Zyla, I have Tiana, and Bryson that I have, and we will recognize them as well. On behalf of the youth, um, last week, they just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. We had a great time uh, with our youth. I just want to also, besides the parents, I want to say a special out to Ms. B, thank you, and to Ms. Dalton, and to all of And you know what the, a lot of the kids told me? They was like, you know what? This is the best time that we've had in a while. Oh, they God. felt very like special, especially when I sent them down there to eat all that junk. But uh, I sent them home to their parents. See, I'm smart. Uh, so we want to say, so um, adults in here, you see what our children can do. Next time you need an MC, a mistress, a ceremony, somebody to sing, to pray, whatever, ask for you. Amen, right? Amen. That they show that they can do. Amen. Um, if anyone saw any glasses, they're black with a gold trim on the rim. If you see they're over here, please give them to Sister Alice Long. They belong to her. All right? We want to also thank Brother Bradley on last Sunday. Let me tell you something. You were not here. You missed a treat because not only was it insightful, but it was knowledgeable.
knowledgeable, we had a real talk, and I learned a lot of things and things like that. So we want to say thank you, wherever he is, I know he's here, but we want to say thank you for sharing your talents with this church. And you know, we look forward to round two, because I know there's a part two, we're looking for that. First Lady would like to meet with all new members next week, immediately after service. Uh, First Lady would like to meet with all new members immediately after morning service. The last day of school, public school, is June 27th, and that is a full day, parents, is letting you know that. Um, early voting started yesterday, and it lasts until um, Saturday, but the polls, the regular polls, will open on June 27th at 6 a.m. Please know, all elections matter. You need to go out to the polls. Do not take it lightly what's going on, because you you want to have someone to vote for in the actual primary, this is the way you get their names on the ballot. So please do so. And um, just want to say a couple more announcements. So, Pastor, it says here that you're going to have a 70th birthday. Yeah. 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 I ain't making that up. So it says here a 70th birthday, and there's a celebration going to be here July 22nd, that's a Saturday here at First Calvary from 2 to 6 p.m. Um, and there is a donation of $20 per person um, for adults and it says for children six, uh, 6 and under 10. And we're celebrating you, Pastor, on your 70th birthday. Yeah. That's a nice thing. And I know it's right because uh, you are 12 years older than me, so I know it's right. Okay. Then we want to say thank you. Um, this is at Dear First Calvary Baptist Church. Thank you so much for participating in our banquet and our installation service recently. Uh, we really appreciate you. God bless you. This is coming from Reverend Mark Thompson um, and Dr. Lisa Thompson in the Unity Baptist Church. Amen. 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 And real quickly, before I end the notices, so um, I have something, Ms. Radcliffe. Can you please come here and get this for your daughter? Tiana was the MC. Um, last week, and I have something, but I'm going to give that to her. And the winner of the contest was King. King showed himself up on last night. Like, yeah, singing, yeah, yeah. doing a little bit of everything. And, and he brought like five people. He told his neighbors, I want this one, that one. So this is for King. This is the gift for me. So give this to him. He brought the most children. All right? And so thank you. Tell him that I do this man. It's really appreciate that. And this is our notice. I ask that you please pray for the sick and everyone have a rest day. Oh, I know there's something coming after that, but I'm just ending my notes the notices officially. And everyone have a, a great, great Father's Day. Amen. 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 Uh, real quick, EE 5686. Alexis, you're blocking somebody. Can you please move your car? Uh, Pastor, happy Father's Day from the Shepherd Ministry. We appreciate you. We love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it.
We may not always uh, highlight every ministry uh, or persons who show their love to us in so many ways. But today, I want to thank all of you because I'm telling you, I celebrated my birthday for the whole month. <laughs> for us that God will continue to use us in a mighty way. Yes. Let us prepare now for our offering. First Chronicles 29, 12 through 14 says, Everything in heaven and earth is yours, O Lord. Wealth and honor come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and to give strength to all. We thank God so much for blessing us. Yes. You know, he just keeps on doing great things. So those of you who can, please stand, and you will be so directed by our ushers.
Good afternoon, First Gallery Baptist Church. Bootsy and the band and the praise and worship team, y'all did it to me again. I might be standing here talking, but I'm over there slid in that second row. The power of God, the Spirit of God is in this house on today. Hallelujah. Yes, I mean, I'm so glad that they allow me to join them on a Father's Day celebration. As a father, I am so grateful. Yes. And y'all know my story, so you know I'm yeah. I was messed up over there when they was lifting him up. And he's more than worthy to be praised, is he not? Amen. 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 And he promises in these pages that he would bless us, that he would never leave or forsake us. He promises that he would give us life more abundantly. Yes. And the 23rd Psalm said, I shall not walk. Yes. Will you be my light when I cannot see? When I can't take another step, Lord, will you carry me? When I lost my fight, would you be my strength? Set me a tape in the presence of my enemy. I shall not walk. I shall not walk. Oh, my soul's got a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not walk. I shall not walk. I shall not walk. Cause my cup's running over, running over, and I shall not walk. I will live my life. But when my help comes,
Elizabeth Taylor told her fifth husband, I won't keep you long. Shot 
God is thinking about forgiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, most people totally misunderstand what true forgiveness is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't understand it at all. There are a lot of myths. There are a lot of misconceptions. There is a lot of faulty thinking about forgiveness. So for the next few weeks, we're going to look at what forgiveness is all about. But because forgiveness gets watered down. Yeah. Yeah. It gets abused. Yeah. It gets cheaper. Yeah. And so I prepared a little quiz for you. You didn't think you were going to come to a test today, did you? <laughs> Before we look at what the Bible says, I want you to answer this. Just answer true or false. Now you don't have to be out loud. You can answer it in the end. One, a person should not be forgiven until they've asked for it. Two, forgiveness includes minimizing the offense and the pain that was caused. Three, forgiveness includes restoring trust and rebuilding and reuniting the relationship. Number four, you haven't really forgiven forgiven until you've forgotten the offense. And fine, when you see somebody else hurt, it's your duty to forgive the offender. Well, if you study the Bible and you study what Jesus says, you discover that all five of these statements are false. Yeah, that's right. And so I'm glad you chose to come to church this, this morning. I'm glad you got an opportunity to listen online because in this series we're going to share what true forgiveness is all about. However, before, however, before we talk about what it is, let me spend a few minutes talking about what it is not. First of all, forgiveness is not conditional. Tell your neighbor, forgiveness is not conditional. In other words, it's not based on somebody else's response. All right. All right. Real forgiveness is unconditional. Real. It is not earned. It is not deserved. It is All not right. bargained for. Right. It is not paid for. It is not based on some promise that you'll never do it again. All right. All right. Now, if you say to someone, I'll forgive you if, that's not forgiveness, that's bargaining. I forgive you if it's not forgiveness at all. Why? Because genuine forgiveness is unconditional. What did Jesus have said when he prayed, Father, forgive them if they ask for it? The truth is, Nobody had asked for it when Jesus prayed from the cross, Father, forgive them for they yeah. know not what they do. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Genuine forgiveness is unconditional. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. And it is offered whether it is ever asked for or not. Yeah. Right. All right. That's right. Secondly, All right. forgiveness is not minimizing the seriousness of the offense. All right. All right. That's right. Did you hear what I said? That's right. It is not minimizing the seriousness of the offense. It is not saying it's no big deal. It's not saying it's okay. Yeah. It's not saying it really didn't hurt me. Or somebody tries to ask for forgiveness, you say, oh, don't worry about it. Mm. It's not a big deal. It didn't hurt. But that's not real forgiveness. All right. yeah. All those people in Buffalo at that supermarket. Are you, are you going to tell him it's no big deal? Just, just forget about it? That's not forgiveness. That's insanity. Yes, Yeah. It would be insane to tell their loved ones to just get over it, to get on with your life and minimize what has happened. You need to understand the difference between being wounded and being wrong. 
those are two different things. Being yeah. wounded is something that is accidental. Somebody hurt you accidentally. Yeah. Right. I accidentally stepped on your toe. Yeah. Yeah. Being wounded is something that's accidental. Yeah. When you were wrong, uh -huh. huh, they intentionally mean to hurt you. That's right. That's right. That's right. They're very different. You see, yeah. when you're wounded, that doesn't require forgiveness because you were hurt intent, unintentionally all the time. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You just need patience and acceptance yeah. at that. Yeah. But when you are wrong, when other people wrong you, it requires forgiveness. Big difference. Sometimes we use forgiveness for all kinds of stuff, but forgiveness doesn't have anything to do with it. Let's say, you don't like the way I normally dress. How I dress down and wear jeans and sneakers to church. Maybe that offends your fashion consciousness. It bothers you. I don't need your forgiveness. I need your acceptance. wound you, I may offend you, but I haven't really hurt you or harmed you intentionally. All right, girl, that's right. That's right. That's right. But forgiveness is reserved for the serious stuff. Yeah. Because when you minimize the wrong, either your own or somebody else's, you're cheapening forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. So forgiveness is not conditional, it's unconditional. And it's not minimizing the seriousness of the offense. Yes, yes. And saying it's no big deal. Yeah, yeah. You're praying with me? Yeah. Thirdly, forgiveness is not resuming a relationship without change. All right. All right. Say, right. David, right. forgiveness yeah. is not it's resuming not. a relationship yeah. without change. Now, this is one of the most misunderstood concepts about forgiveness. Forgiveness is not the same as restoring a relationship. Somebody say amen. Yeah. And some of y'all are afraid to forgive because you think you got to go back to that person. You think that they got to be your best friend again. You think you got to remarry them or whatever. No, no, my friends. Restoring relationship and forgiveness are two different things. All right, all right, all right. Yeah. The Bible teaches that forgiveness is instant. But trust must be built up over a long period of time. Forgiveness takes care of the damage done. It just lets the person off the hook. It lets them go scot-free. But it does not guarantee that the relationship will be restored. Those are two different issues. That's right, that's right. Forgiveness is your part in reconciliation. You, when you forgive the offender who hurt you, but for the relationship to be restored, the offender has to do three things. Okay. Y'all yeah. pray with me? All right. All right. First of all, they got to demonstrate, demonstrate genuine forgiveness yeah. Yeah. or repentance. They have to show that they genuinely are genuinely, genuinely sorry before the relationship can be rebuilt. Yes, absolutely. And that means a yeah. change in lifestyle. That means a change yeah. in attitude. Yeah. They need an attitude adjustment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Number two. Yeah. They have to make restitution whenever possible for the damage done. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. And three, the offender must rebuild your trust by proving that they have changed over time. All right. All right. For example, yeah. let's say if somebody repeatedly wrongs you over and over and over again, you're obligated by God to forgive that person over and over and over again. You remember yeah. the person went to Jesus yeah. and said, how often 
forgive my brother and Jesus says 70 times 7. In other words, how often they uh, go against you, you ought to forgive them. But you are not obligated, obligated to trust that person or to restore the relationship. For example, you have an abusive alcoholic spouse who battles his wife. And he does it repeatedly over and over and over again. And finally the spouse says, no more. You're harming me. You're harming the kids. You're out of here. And they come back and say, I'm sorry. I'm ashamed of what I have done. Please forgive me. You're obligated as a Christian to say, yes, I forgive you. Then they say, okay, can I come back home? No way. No, no, baby. That's another story. You have to prove your trust. Do you understand the difference between trust and forgiveness? Because it takes more than forgiveness to build a relationship. It takes trust, and trust has to be built over time. But you say, wait, you forgiven me. Can't we go back the way the things went? No, no, my friend. Trust must be rebuilt. So forgiveness starts by making a choice. Forgiveness is not conditional. It is not minimizing the offense, saying it was no big deal. It's not resuming a relationship automatically, just saying it's okay to get back to normal. You're forgiven without change. No, no, my friend, because if you come against me intentionally, we got to sort these things out. I'll forgive you, but I'm going to watch you for a while. Well, that's where I'm going to leave you. We'll pick up this thought next week. However, I want to tell you this. I thank God that I am a recipient of God's forgiveness in my life. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You see, I was born in sin, shaped in iniquity. I was guilty, I was vile, I was dead and dying, I was a walking and talking dead man, I was too mean to live, not fit to die, too grand to wait, too miserable to save, too dead to be alive, too alive to be buried on my way to a burning hell. But it looked beyond my thoughts and saw my knees. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. One day, he picked me up and turned me around, put me on the street car straight, and I've been running for Jesus for my long time, and I'm not tired yet. Anybody want to go with me? Come on and go with me to my father's house. In my father's house. He's able to make a us stewards of the mysteries of God. Gather hands of the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Creatures of righteousness. Go the trumpet and die. Sound the alarm. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Next Hallelujah, week, Jesus. Don't miss this song. Okay. I'm just starting off. The ultimate Jesus. test of love. Yes, God. The doors of the church is open. All right. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming. Yes, yes. If you don't have a church on, if you just raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I want to check this God out that you're talking about. Yes. Our deacons and deaconesses will come, share Christ with you, tell you about a home on high. You can be an inheritor of a place in the sky. Tell you about a God that will take care of you when you're unable to take care of yourself. Tell you about somebody that will come in your room. Sit down by your bed. Cool down, scorching fever. Ease wrecking pain. I want to tell you about the God that I serve. He'll pick you up and turn you around. Yes, he will. 
you don't have a church home, just raise your hand. Now, one of my teachers, the deaconess, will come and share with you. Let us all stand on our feet. Jesus is calling. Come now, while the blood gets run warm in your bed.